He is the founder and chairman of Harappa Education. He is an entrepreneur, institution builder, academician, and philanthropist. He has built two world-class higher education institutions in India, the Indian School of Business and Ashoka University. May I now invite Mr. Sinha for his keynote address and Mr. Pawar to moderate the session and take up the questions from the audience for Mr. Sinha. May I request the audience to type in their questions in the chat box. We'll have the Q&A round at the end of the session. Over to you, sir. So, Pramath, uh, if you want to take a few minutes giving some general lessons, should we say, lessons yeah. on, and your topic is about winning strategies for a tech. Uh, so we'll start with that and then I have a few questions unless some of them get covered. And the idea really is we at the end of today's session, we had a lot of good conversations, very many good presentations, very many good questions. So now it's all about the strategy, winning strategy. Got it. So uh, thank you first, uh, Raji Vijay, for having me. And... Uh, I understand that this is more towards the end of the day. So I suspect that whatever I have to say has been said, but I will try and quickly cover the point. And as you said, Raji, if there are questions or if we can have a discussion that will uh, make it more interesting. Uh, I think there are uh, three points that I'd like to make about winning strategies. And the way I think the common definition of strategy is, you know, the how, the how of how you get to a certain goal. All of us uh, want, uh, I imagine, to build a successful enterprise, to have impact, to touch lots of learners, to make a difference and so on. So usually most startups or most companies aspire to similar goals in terms of size, scale, impact, pace of growth. Uh, but how you get there uh, is obviously the big strategy question. And I grappled with this myself, uh, Raji, when uh, I set up Harappa. Uh, in fact, I think I was very late in setting up Harappa because uh, a lot of the ed tech activity had started much earlier. And I am always, I have always been a big fan of technology in education. So there was a temptation to jump in uh, and there was a temptation to uh, get onto the bandwagon as it were. Uh, but I think the first thing in my strategy that I would say is that, you know, uh, it's important to really think through uh, and that's what good strategy is about that, uh, you know, how are you going to be different or distinctive? I, I found that a lot of people were just replicating the offline world online or taking what was happening in the current classrooms or coaching or exams and creating a digital version of it. And in fact, replicating a lot of the ills of the earlier version uh, in the digital version, sometimes making it worse. And I think that got EdTech a little bit of a bad name. I think that bad name still persists because I do think that we need technology to be uh, tightly infused into education. And I'll come back to that point, but uh, jumping into it and uh, just offering stuff randomly uh, has not done the industry or any of us any favors. But let me be more specific. So uh, around the time that I started to get into ed tech, and I'm really a higher ed guy, as you know, uh, everybody was offering courses on a platform from certain col colleges and universities and offering it online. So you were re basically you were creating an Amazon or a platform to resell. I think Coursera, edX, to you and so on in America, Udacity, Udemy. And then if you look at the replicas that started in India, everybody was just doing that. And I knew, for example, that I couldn't see, I could see the value of that. And of course, these companies have been very successful. But other than providing access to those courses, I felt like the 
opportunity was far more interesting than that. And to cut a long story short, I decided that I was going to focus on particular skills, which is what Harappa was about, and that I would do it myself rather than selling other people's courses. Now, this point is not just about saying that, you know, Pramath wants to do A and Raji wants to be, do B and Vijay wants to do C. So uh, that makes the strategy, you know, what, what are you interested in? I think it's more than that. And where it is more than that is that fundamentally, Raji, I think that the way people are learning online and the way people are, uh, the, the way you can teach online is fundamentally, fundamentally different from what you do in the classroom. And I think edtech entrepreneurs have to understand that that is in fact the big opportunity. The big opportunity is to truly reinvent education. And if you want to create value, and if you're not chasing numbers or valuations, long term, I think what you have to do is focus on what is it that you are doing that is genuinely path breaking and uses technology in an intelligent, different new way to almost reinvent education and doesn't just replicate what is available today in the other world. There's nothing wrong with replicating. I'm not suggesting that a lot of people have done that and done that successfully. But I think if you're worth your salt, if I may say so, uh, and that's not just about a challenge, but if you really want to build a sustainable business, the real, and I think there's fantastic opportunities. The real opportunity is to think intelligently about I mean, just to give you an example, uh, one of my favorite ed tech providers these days is a company called Outlier. So what they do is they provide uh, for credit university courses in completely async mode online. Now, if you look at the way they deliver that course, it's completely different from anything you would have seen so far, including courses on Coursera. It's truly an innovation. Uh, what is fascinating, for example, is that they will have a faculty member teach a concept for 10 minutes, which is like a video. Then they give you four different pathways to practice and revise the content that you learned from the faculty member. You can choose which, which way to learn that you want. Now, what they're basically doing without getting too technical is to give the learner the power to decide how they will learn that concept that they've been taught. Now, you couldn't do this in a class. You couldn't do this in a regular classroom class. You can only do it online. So the way they have thought about learning is to say, how can we leverage the technology to do something that we could not do before? And so that's, prob that's point number one. I don't want to belabor that. I'm sure we'll get a chance to discuss that and I can give more examples. But what most people don't realize is that fundamentally online and digital learning is completely different from the way you learn offline. And that is a challenge, but that is also the biggest opportunity. The second point uh, I want to make, of course, is that the whole point about online is that everybody should have high quality. If you are now giving poor quality in online, then you don't have any business to be in online, the way I see it. Uh, the whole point of technology and you know when you when you use Microsoft Word, right, or when you use any software, when you use Amazon, right, it's available to everybody, and uh, it's 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 that's the democratization that people keep talking about. So if you have to offer yet another portal or yet another word processor, uh, the fact is that you have to compete with that quality. Uh, in, in real education, what often happens is ki, achha, you go to the neighborhood 
स्कूल वहां पे एक क्वालिटी मिलेगा यू गो टू स्लाइटली पे अप इफ यू आर विलिंग टू पे मोर यू गो टू अनदर इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड देयर यू विल गेट अ बेटर क्वालिटी एंड देयर अ थर्ड क्वालिटी और यू कैन गो इन अ हिल्स एंड गो इनटू अ प्राइवेट रेसिडेंशियल स्कूल एंड गेट बेटर क्वालिटी आई थिंक व्हाट यू हैव टू रियलाइज इज दैट ऑनलाइन क्वालिटी doesn't vary by provider or or if you are going to wait you if you think you can get away by giving second quality or third quality and charging less uh, that won't work because then people will go for the free uh, uh, content that is available at least maine yahi dekha hai to agar high quality provide kariyega then people will pay for what you have and they will because essentially what they will feel is that you are respecting them the real world doesn't respect them because it gives us gives them education on learning of the quality they pay for sometimes not even that but for a moment if we assume that but at the in at the online level you know everybody does need to get the same high quality and i think that's uh, going to be very important the last thing i will tell you uh, and i don't i i think you may have encountered this uh, even when you set up niit and i thought i heard in the discussion that i caught in passing just now that outcomes somehow are becoming even more important online when somebody comes to ashoka uh, they do ask ki bhai kya naukri milegi what are your students doing after they complete a liberal arts degree scope kya hai and all that but at the end of the day they are happy and to hand their four years over to us ki theek hai yaar reputation achhi hai you you come here you will get a good enough education the challenge i am finding with my online uh, efforts is that people are much more hard nosed about what is the return i am going to get because it's a it's very much an individual to company transaction and in that transaction people want ki bhai ye jo maine khareeda hai isse mujhe milega kya uh, there is still that mentality ki ha college university school mein jo mil gaya wo theek hai matlab maybe i can't ask for outcome wo sabko dete hain but yahan to i am buying i am taking a call and that is tough right because in 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 all education i'm not sure that we are able to deliver outcomes to everyone right uh, and i think you and i know that outcomes depend a lot on what the learner wants to do or how much how motivated they are how much effort they are putting in so explaining that to people and making people understand that uh, you know of course outcomes are there uh, hopefully whatever strategy you come up with works backwards from certain outcomes and and you design to deliver those outcomes Uh, but i think it's also very important to think about how do you communicate the value of what you are doing and therefore the marketing branding uh, becomes a significant challenge in education i feel particularly in online education because there is no place for people to come and see and often entrepreneurs don't realize this uh the internet and the vcs have really spoiled entrepreneurs by giving lots of money which gets spent on marketing and on google and social media platforms to lead generate and you know uh, if you get into the technicality of it huge uh, customer acquisition costs uh, cacs as they are called people are pouring money to get uh, numbers but the real pull the real uh, uh, attraction of the cost of the uh, content you are offering or the uh, the program you are offering is not there and so people are pushing a lot and that again becomes over time uh, a, a self defeating uh, 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 strategy so i think i'll stop here raji I, i'm making basically three points the first point i'm making is isse kuch naya karke dikhao isse kuch uh, do something that is truly new and different Uh, and maybe it will not work but don't don't just replicate what is happening because and think intelligently about technology ko how can you use to do something that is new and different that was not otherwise possible uh, second uh, think uh, think consistent high quality don't think of different levels of quality and 
and I, I I didn't make that point explicitly enough. Quality at scale, obviously, because why are you otherwise using technology? You can set up a small classroom or a school or hire a few uh, instructors or teachers to deliver the program. And third, remember that uh, people are going to be a little bit more demanding of outcomes in this world, uh, and. Uh, even if you can deliver outcomes, convincing people and communicating to them that you can do that is not a trivial task. And your marketing and branding will become very important because people cannot touch and feel and come and visit and, and get that assurance from you. I'll stop there, Raji. There's many things to cover, but I'll let you uh, ask me questions and we can discuss this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You put your finger on a very few very crucial things, and I think also put it very succinctly. So let me ask you a couple of questions, which would have been uh, right in front of you as you were building Harappa. See, when you're teaching somebody a hard skill, you have to learn programming, you have to learn something or the other, modeling or something. People can see the value and they can say, I couldn't do this, now I can do it. When you go into soft skills, most people will not know what they are weak at. And if they become strong, they may not know how much stronger. So therefore, quantifying the game becomes very difficult. So how have you addressed this issue? Because it is a big challenge, I think, that you've taken up in looking at, within quotes, soft areas of learning. And how did you confront this question? How did you... In addition to what you talked about being very good quality and so on, uh, here the dimension of difficulty is higher. So what was central thinking that got you to you know, So Raji, uh, that problem? Yeah, no, Raji, you've again, uh, you in turn have hit on a, <laughs> a very uh, important point. Uh, in fact, I'm actually today uh, in Philadelphia and I was all day yesterday at Princeton at ETS, uh, which is this company that uh, does assessments, if you recall, for GRE, TOEFL. Yeah. Uh, we are all, uh, some of us have taken those exams. Uh, by the way, they have been working on these assessments for many years, Raji. Uh, and uh, exactly the kind of assessments of material that I teach. Uh, so for example, assessment of uh, critical thinking. Uh, assessment of collaborative problem solving. They have an assessment on that, right? I recognize, Rajiv, that these are not easy to assess. When I first started out, it was very clear to me that it was not easy to assess. We hired a few people who came from the assessments background, uh, very long resumes, very highly qualified. They came up with some, some stuff but when we tested it, Rajiv, we were quite disappointed. Uh, firstly, even I could see that the questions were very trite. Uh, they were not deeply uh, incisive and so on. I also then found that uh, uh, the, uh, these kinds of questions, especially if they are assessment questions, people can game. So, uh, you know, it's very easy to say, ki, haan, ye hona tha. Uh, this situation may Raji should have spoken softly to me and not raised his voice. Uh, but uh, uh, that's the correct answer. But uh, will you actually change your behavior? Right. So in the specific case of these soft skills, uh, we have used this, uh, I think it's the Tuckman model, right, of different levels of learning. Is it Tuckman, Tuckman or uh, uh, one of these guys who have the four stages of learning? But what we have found that makes the most difference is what typically happens at the workplace, Raji. If, if you work with me and you tell me that Pramad, your communication skills are not good, you go and do a course from Harappa. And then I will tell you that I have a Harappa certificate. The communications course has improved. <laughs> And uh, they have assessment and they are giving me, first my pre-course assessment was 65 marks out of 100, now 95 out of 100. I have improved my communication skills from 30 points. And you are listening to me saying that this guy sounds the same, there is no change in his assessment. Right? 
so then the answer lies in that that you know what we are trying to do is ask people's bosses as part of the assessment ki bhai dekho humne ye train to kar diya ab aap dekho ki ye improve ho raha hai ki nahi right and so when companies for example our business is largely b2b when companies ask us for outcomes we say ki listen we need your people involved in the assessment uske bina hum assessment nahi kar sakte humne apni taraf se padhai ki and of course i work very hard to make sure ki maine usko padhaya apni taraf se lekin ek exam usko dekhkar at the end of the first uh, for the course is not enough to prove it uh, so we have now introduced assessments that happen after 6 months Uh, three months, six months, uh, to see whether those uh, those uh, learnings have gotten embedded in the workplace. We also do, Raji, a lot of uh, drills that we make them do. So you actually give them tasks to do rather than questions to answer. Okay. Uh, so what you do is you go do this task, and then you come back and tell us what happened in these tasks, right? or just give us open ended answers to certain questions now again that's a little bit time intensive but we are learning a lot about assessments from that so i think these assessment issues are very real issues and but raji they are also getting solved uh, see that's the point i was making because this is a whole new field lots and lots of people are working on these ideas there are psychologists who are now coming in and saying oh we have to now help assess somebody's uh, uh, empathy skills right uh, in the lot, you lot are interested in the collab so lot, yeah, lot there's a whole science. new science you know there's a total lot new science i don't know if you know this guy eric schmidt uh you may have heard he's created they're calling it learning engineering again i think it's a fancy name to yeah, uh, i'm sure you've been in this business longer i'm sure not only that not only, only that yeah at the university at nimrana we've been using this term for a while but you're very right i think there's a whole new science that's one question second uh, is a linked question is that you talked about saying that you get the closure by looking at the changed attributes or behavior from people where this person is working in addition to a more scientific way to assess both these are important and that brings me to the question to say that you know b to b you can close this loop and so the one question is the scaling this even in b to b but when you go to b to c are you looking at that as a market given this complexity yes. of this difficulty just started raji uh... there i think the way to crack it is through some cohort based learning uh, so that people work in groups and give each other feedback uh, some of that feedback may not be accurate uh, people may be sniping and being unfair but you know this is what happens in a ashoka leadership class also mm. uh, there's a facilitator they ask they run an exercise and then people give each other feedback sometimes that feedback can be anonymous Uh, sometimes so that the role of collaboration among peers to give and receive feedback as a method of assessment again ji ji so i think that's a very interesting angle there and you can scale that and provided you and build some group break provided you yes. build skills in that cohort yes um and they don't game it as usual five friends get together right. so there raji the interesting thing is that again i was very impressed with some of the stuff that the ets guys are doing i'll give you two examples right so one of the thing is that this sentiment analysis right even what people are writing in the chat and the tone with which they are speaking with each other mm-hmm. is something that they are able to actually assess quite at almost 90% accuracy did i cut you off right am i speaking over you uh, stuff like that uh, online you can as- assess it now this is, is this is this is a subject that needs a much longer and deeper discussion because you're opening up a completely uh, not a new chapter but you're opening up a new method of dealing with an old unsolved problem i, yeah. I really appreciate what you said in the beginning that do something which do something which is different not just do it differently i think do do and do something which people may have given up as a problem which is, can't be solved so be distinctive in that as well i think can 
this needs another conversation if nothing else at the university where we have a lot of le- you know learning science going on last question and then i'll hand it back to professor khanna um about building credibility in the market building salience building a brand and i have watched you and worked with you closely when we looked at isb a little less closely but quite aware of ashoka and now you are building this new thing okay now the others went off very well but still are taking time and becoming very strongly embedded as solid brands when you come into the tech world in many ways it will be far more difficult to build a brand so what are some of your views because unless you build the brand your cost of acquisition remains very high so any thoughts on that because most of the people here in this audience have to build their brands in an online world i think raji while learning science if i may borrow your expression is evolving and is opening up a huge new frontier which is very exciting if you ask me very exciting uh marketing science that you have to use you have to you go back to the fundamentals usme whether you are doing social media or you are doing videos that are going viral uh, or whether you are sort of using influencers to drive your uh, brand i think mujhe to lag raha hai in the last 4 5 years that i've been working on uh, on harappa as well as doing some edutech stuff with uh, ashoka we launched something called ashoka x i think those fundamental things about branding which we learnt in in the old era if you will are still very true so what do you stand for uh, how will you consistently communicate what you stand for right ab for example raji hamara jo branding hai in harappa it is aimed at the 30 year old 25 to 45 ka range hai but it's aimed at the working professional now we can get confused and say ki student ke paas jao campus ke paas jao wahan bhi learners hain and so on but we are very clear that we are work we are we may be ed tech we may be whatever but we are about the working professional so everything we do everything we design everything we project has to be focused on the young working professional so very sharp targeting very sharp and clear targeting uh we have had challenges raji for example because we are b2b and now b2c now how do you build a brand like that most people actually tell us this is stupid don't do it just stick to one now it's one thing to say ki don't do it and i listen to them it's another thing to say ki bhai ye challenge hai how do you se- how do you separate can you separate uh uh so again and and these are not challenges raji that you haven't faced or we haven't faced in our earlier lives i think you have to go back to the same fundamentals uh ki uh, in if you had a company that was selling i don't know food uh, how would you have a retail business and a, a b2b business and have two brands in effect under the same umbrella brand right so i think those are all issues that i would argue that have been answered by the scientists of marketing uh, so please draw on those issues would be my advice to young uh, startups that don't uh, don't go again with the crowd and say ki are uh, uh, google ads lagao seo karo are to to what end right and uh, what i also find and one last point i will make uh, this may also be a more traditional point but very important the the uh, marketing channels raji are so easily accessible uh, that uh, you will have multiple multiple people in the company selling multiple things and they will start doing social media marketing posting on linkedin ye khareed lo wo khareed lo new program and so on Uh, that actually harms the brand 
uh, because you uh, the access to marketing easy access to marketing channels by everyone uh, makes the can make the communication very confusing for the person at the other side ki bhai harappa ye kar kya raha hai uh, what are they really about because sab log sab kuch post kiye ja rahe hain uh, communicate kiye ja rahe hain to somewhere having somebody at the top saying ki bhai mera हमें बेचना तो है हमें अपने नेक्स्ट प्रोग्राम की एडमिशंस करानी है तो उसको पुश तो करना है आ, हमारा एमबीए प्रोग्राम शुरू हो रहा है हमारा अंडर ग्रेजुएट शुरू हो रहा है हमारा कुछ पब्लिक पॉलिसी में शुरू हो रहा है कुछ हम सर्टिफिकेट प्रोग्राम शुरू कर रहे हैं डेटा साइंस में बट हु केयरिंग अबाउट द एन आई ब्रांड एंड इज इज समी जस्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट द एन आई ब्रांड इन टर्म्स ऑफ पोजिशन क्वालिटी you know scale whatever it is so i think that is another conundrum that one has to constantly and especially people at the top have to constantly keep saying ki nahi bhai wo sab to chal raha hai wo bik raha hai lekin mujhe apna company ka brand strong banana so anyway i think this you opened up at the end of this session some very very good um sensitive and critical questions which um, you touched upon and that needs a longer session on another day but thanks ever so much i think for getting us to close this on a on a mind opening uh fashion so thanks Thank so much you. raman thanks and i know Thank that you're in the us and i woke you up early no no ma thank uh, you thank you for adjusting my time very kind of you thank you so much thanks all right neha back to you and back to rajesh Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. It was indeed an enlightening session, and I must admit, it is always a treat listening to you, sir.